The Help Desk Ticketing Database is the database that you'll have open all day long and typically in a web browser. So what I did was I went to spiceworks.com and I signed up for a free Help Desk Ticket Database. And it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and try this on your own. You can just go to spiceworks.com and create an account. Now the free one is gonna be ad driven. So you're gonna see some ads at the top and the side of your screen. But if you go with the paid version, then you won't have to see those ads anymore. So I've already got a couple of tickets that were created automatically just by creating the account. But now let's pretend that a client is called up and is having a problem with their computer monitor and we need to create a new ticket. So you receive the call and the first thing you wanna do is click on new ticket and we see this pop-up happen. Now if you have more than one organization, you'll have multiple options in this dropdown, but I just have the one and then you're gonna have the contact. So hit the drop down again. Now it only shows the contacts that it's already been in communication with, which at this time is just myself. So I'll click on the contact and just start adding in the name of that user. Although this is the full user name, the email address is this. And it'll go ahead and add that in automatically as a new contact. And it prompts me because it does find it, which is an exchange online. So it found that it's a real email address. And now I'm gonna put in the summary. And I'll say that the monitor has changed color. That's something that happens a lot with users if their cable's not plugged in all the way. So I'll put in a description and I'll say that the monitor appears blue instead of normal colors. Now I need to assign it or just leave it unassigned and then we can let any other help desk agent pick that up. But if I am going to assign it, I can go ahead and pick myself as the person who's gonna handle it. And then here's the priority. We see high, medium, or low. So in this particular case, it's probably going to be a low priority. And under the category, I can go ahead and choose any one of these options. I'll choose this one as a hardware problem and I'll click create. Now, if the user has a file that they want to have attached as well for some sort of proof that they're having an issue, maybe a screenshot, they can go ahead and send to you by email or you can remote into their computer and do it, then you can attach it at that point. Now I see my ticket is here. It shows who it's assigned to. It shows the name of the user that's having the problem, the organization, the priority, and the fact that it's a hardware status open. So I'm gonna click back on it. And I'm gonna put in a response, had user plug cable in more firmly. Now, if you take a look, the public response means that the user can see this. If I just choose an intern load, it means that only I can see it or anyone else in the help desk. And that's really a useful feature and is in a lot of different ticketing databases because there may be some things you may not want the user to see that might be embarrassing to them. So I'll just go ahead and choose send. And then at the top right here, we see the option for close, wait for user, merge into another ticket if there's multiple tickets for that user, or you could choose to delete the ticket if the user says that they don't want this to be a ticket that stays in the system. So I'm gonna to choose to close the ticket because I believe the issue has been resolved. I've heard back from the user and everything looks good. So I'm going to close that right now. And you can see the ticket drops off of my open queue. Now, if I hit the drop down, I can choose closed and you can see the ticket that I just created and closed has now officially been closed. I'm going to click on it just so we can see it once again. You can see the history of it and you can make any additional changes if you'd like. You may also see a ticket that's sent to you to let you know that a ticket's been opened and assigned to you. And the user will receive a ticket saying that they've received the ticket, they've created it, and then when it's done, they'll receive another email saying that the ticket has been closed. There's lots of other things that you can set up for a ticketing database, such as the service level agreement or SLA, so that way tickets don't get too old before they are 
going to have to be touched by an agent. Otherwise, the manager of the help desk may have to step in. Incident tracking such as this can follow an incident using your ticketing system to ensure that an issue has been resolved in a timely manner. 